I love Sycamuse. Church starts at nine, so everybody says, hey, look, it's five to nine, we should leave for church. It's almost faster to go find somebody in this town than phone them, you know? Just, I'll just drive around and look for their car. Then I don't have to leave them a message, I don't have to phone them back. When you add up all the time, it's shorter, right? That's right. You guys awake? I'm gonna stand in the shade today because the last two Sundays I went home and I looked like a tomato with teeth. Staring at the sun for two services. And this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's easy. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Everybody rejoice. presence of the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, celebrate the presence of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Everybody rejoice in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in you. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, celebrate the presence of the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate the presence of the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Everybody rejoice in the Lord. Everybody rejoice in the Lord. Everybody rejoice in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And everybody said, Amen. Aiden, come on up here, buddy. So on your planet, we have, our, oh good, we've got uh, Psalm 103, and I'm just going to read through that right now here, and then we'll pray for service and continue. So Psalm 103 says, praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name, praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfy, satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you who serve, who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you that we have sunshine and that we're able to meet uh, together here, and that it's warm, and uh, just all the blessings that you give us, Lord. I thank you that we uh, are living in an area that is still uh, prosperous, Lord, and that you've taken care of us thus far, and that you will continue to do so. I just uh, thank you for all these things. I pray that you'd bless this service and uh, that we would learn from your word. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Aiden. God's Word is so awesome. And uh, so many of the songs we sing are straight from Scripture because of that. So that song in your uh, bulletin there, your daily planet, that Psalm 103 is what this song is taken from. A lot of you know it. and compassionate He's slow to anger and rich in love The Lord is gracious and compassionate He's slow to anger and rich in love And the Lord He is good to all he has compassion on all that he has made as far as the east is from the west that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west that's how far God has removed our transgressions from us. So praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise. gracious and compassionate he's slow to anger and rich in love the Lord is gracious and compassionate he's slow to anger and rich in love and the Lord he's so good to all he has compassion on all that he has made as far as the east is from the west that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us. So praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. And praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. east is from the west yeah that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us so praise the Lord oh my Praise the Lord And praise the Lord Oh my soul Praise the Lord And praise the Lord Oh my soul Praise the Lord then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How 
great you are. Lord, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to my favorite songs. I'm hoping I can remember how to sing it for you. Oh heart of mine, why must you stray from one so far you run away and one more time you have to pay the emptiness of needless shame. Oh, heart of mine, come back home. You've been too long out on your own. And he's been there all along, watching for you down that road. So come home running. His arms are open wide, His name is Jesus, He understands, and He is the answer you are looking for, so come home running, just as you are. Oh, child of God, you're so dearly loved and ransomed by your Savior's blood and called by name, daughter and son, wrapped in the robes of his righteousness. So come home running, his arms are open wide. His name is Jesus, He understands, and He is the answer that you are looking for, so come home running, just as you are, so come home running, His arms are open wide, His name is Jesus, He understands. That he is the answer that you are looking for. So come home running just as you are. So come home running just as you are. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself, yeah, He carried my cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Messiah, you are the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the ransom for sinners, he is the rescue from glory. 
Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. His body the bread, and His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, yeah. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, you are the name above all names. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, you are the ransom from glory, Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. All I hope is in you. All I hope is in you. All the glory to you, our God. You are the light of the world. Jesus Messiah. You are the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, you are the ransom from glory. Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all, you are the rescue for sinners, you are the ransom from glory, Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. God's people said, amen. Our God and Savior Jesus is so great. All right, I'm going to call up Michelle. Michelle Josh's Bell. This young lady, this young woman, we're not going to call her a young lady because that sounds like she's a teenager. This, this savvy young woman graduated with her master's degree yesterday from Briarcrest Bible College. Yes. Congratulations, I'm going to break the phone. <laughs> and uh, she had to watch her grad ceremony on a computer screen. But I saw, Josh, you were a wise husband and got her some really good flowers in that Facebook post. Well done, young man. And you're just a newlywed. Now, we know why she chose you, right? Oh, they were from his mom? My mom. Oh, they're from her, her mom. <laughs> Never mind, no kudos to you. But you did give her a kiss on the cheek. That was good. That was good. Yes. Congratulations, Michelle. Thank you. And um, and I don't know if I've mentioned this, but Michelle is now uh, halftime with our church, and she's shepherding our youth ministries and other things. And you saw her running around like a mad banshee on Friday night. Can you thank God with me for that turnout on Friday night for Bob's Burgers? Wasn't that amazing? Yeah. What what I really loved about that was the fact more. You know, I'm praising God for the $5,000 towards their down payment. But more than that, to see the community out again and, and the participation of our army of volunteers. And uh, um, I think w anybody that was running around in that chaos on Friday night enjoying it is still having a hard time walking today. But we're okay. Right? We're okay. So Michelle is going to read us the word of God. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here. It's nice that the weather's so much warmer, too, so that it's not quite so cold sitting out here. 
But yeah, today we're going to be reading in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. So if you have a daily planet, it's there. Otherwise, pull out your Bibles and flip to it. 2 Peter 3, 1 to 10. Starting in verse 10. I mean, verse 1. Wow. <laughs> um, this is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From the, before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command and he brought the earth out from this water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand, e a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day the Lord, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the furry elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day and for yeah, everything you've blessed us with and that we're able to gather together like this. And uh, I just pray that you bless Bob as he comes and um, preaches your word to us. And as we study scripture together, that your spirit would be with us and that we would have tender hearts to what you're saying to us. And uh, yeah, that this message would be something that we'd um, hold on to um, and meditate on in the coming week as we uh, further your kingdom here in Sycamus and just, yeah, serve our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, when Henry says my name, I, I listen. Right? There you go. We did Kids Zone Live from the Savison's front yard the other day, didn't we, guys? And uh, we've been doing Kids Zone Live. Who knew that when you went to Bible college, you had to know how to have a portable TV station? Hi, Mom. They're watching. You guys watch what you say. It's on, it's on record. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've mentioned this before, um, and it's to do with what we're going to talk about today. But uh, did you know that the Queen has been inside this building? The Queen was in the hub? Yes? Okay. Okay. Um, Yes, it was in this. It was in the '60s. There's a uh, hardcover history of Sycamus book in City Hall, and there's a black and white photo of the Queen inside that building when it was the Catholic Church when she was on a tour of Canada. So I want to get a picture of that and blow it up and get it framed and put it on the on the hub wall. Um, but uh, let let me just paint a scenario for you. Um, we had Bob's Burgers, so we tied it up a little bit. But if you go inside the hub right now, you'll see pans in the sink that have been washed and they're sitting there drying they need to be put away and there's places the hub need to be swept from the multiple feet that went in and out on our dirt parking lot and there's still some recycling needs to be put away the hub's going to get tidied up this week and you bet your boots if the queen was coming back to the hub tomorrow that a whole bunch of us would give up our afternoon to make that place look really shiny right and get ready for the the queen to come back to the hub and, uh, and, and visit. When John the Baptist was getting ready for the first coming of Jesus, he said, prepare you the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. You're not going to have any potholes when the king's limo is coming down Main Street. You know, you're going to make, get the place ready for the visit for the king. That is what we're doing in regard to his second coming. Jesus Christ is coming again. The Bible has been fulfilled thus far. It said he would come the first time, and he did. He fulfilled 300-something prophecies. He got it 
Um, the Bible got it right for his first visit. And um, we can look to the past to see that the Bible also predicted um, things like in 1948, Israel would get their land back. We've talked about that a few times. That has happened. Everything that the Bible says has come true so far. And we believe the scriptures that the Bible says Jesus is going to come again. So our job is to get this place ready for the coming of the king. And more importantly, to let people know he's coming. Jesus had a really big story that's one of my favorite songs to sing when I was a kid. Um, Jesus said a great man was going to have a banquet, a feast, and he wanted everybody to come and get that big free dinner. When we do sycamores, people show up and they get... They get the free funnel cakes, which are just amazing. The hot dogs, the hot dogs, if you're from New York, um, they, they, they get the free food. It's a big, free, fun feast, and everybody has a great time. Jesus said, a great man prepared a feast. This is a story he told. And he went to invite people, and he went and invited a rich man. He says, no, 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 I'm too busy. Another guy says, no, no, I just got married. I can't come to the banquet, you know. Um, don't trouble me now. I've married a wife. I bought me a cow. In other words, he's too busy in, in business. And uh, Jesus went and his servants asked all these people to come to this beautiful free banquet. And none of them had time for the king. So Jesus said, okay, to his servants, go into the highways and the byways, to the places where the poor live and the lame and the crippled and people that don't ever get to come to something like this. And you invite them. And they came. And there was a great feast. But the ones that rejected the feast, that was on them, and they never got in on the glory. And basically the world ended, and they were shut out from that banquet, that beautiful, huge party. The Revelation calls it the wedding feast of the Lamb. And they never got to take part in that because they refused the invitation. Our job is simply to invite people to Jesus. Not to convince them, but just say he loves you, He's going to give you eternal life. He's going to forgive your sins. He's going to give you all of this for free if you want it. And, and that is the invitation that God makes to the world. And Peter, who was a follower of Jesus, was coming to the end of his life. And he has told us that Jesus is coming. And it's a certainty did you know, I found out something interesting about the earth yesterday. Scientists around the world have noted the earth has been spinning on its axis faster lately. The fastest ever recorded. Several scientists have spoken to the press about the unusual phenomenon, with some pointing out that this past year saw some of the shortest days ever recorded. Planetary scientists are not concerned about the new finding. I am, not really, but... They've learned that there's many factors that have an impact on planetary spin, including the moon's pull, snowfall levels, and mountain erosion. So the Earth is spin, spinning faster. Of course, you know what this means. Time goes faster for the Earth, the older it gets, just like for you and me, right? Right now, my life is going at 52 miles per hour. That's 80 kilometers an hour. That's way faster than I can keep up and walk if I try to, right? Life's going faster the older I get. Right now, life for me has gone faster than it's ever gone before. I don't know where the weeks go. I don't know where the years go. The days are long. The years are fast, as they say. And all of a sudden, we're also in 2 Peter chapter 3. And I thought, oh, we're just starting a new series. Here we are in 2 Peter chapter 3. And Peter's talking about the end of this cosmos, this world system. Not the end of the world. Okay, this isn't like the movies where the earth, you know, is, is completely destroyed and blows up like the Death Star. That's not what we're talking about. But the end of this system is going to blow up and God's going to remake the world when Jesus comes back and he's going to fix this place. He's going to come and he's going to show the politicians how it's actually done. Because he's the king and he knows how to fix this place. And Peter prefaced, prefaced all that. This is Second Peter 3 and it's in your bulletin there. It was read by Michelle. He says, this is my second letter to you. So this is the second time I'm trying to stimulate you to wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. Peter wants to stir up our minds to reality, okay? And this is not reality, okay? This tent is reality, okay? 
That is the shadow of the tent. Okay? Heaven is the reality, and we, we're seeing its shadow on the earth. So the earth is beautiful. Think about how much more beautiful heaven is, the real thing, right? Real life is going to come down to this earth. It's going to last forever. Not this shadow of a life that lasts us 80 years if we're lucky down here, right? One pastor put it this way. Peter is drawing our minds to Jesus and to living our life for him. He wants to stimulate wholesome thinking in this culture we live in that isn't thinking straight, right? That three-year-old car in your driveway, it's a piece of junk, the commercials say. Get a new one. Right? You know, you should get some abs implanted into you so you look like you're buff. There's guys that get calf implants for Pete's sake. Right? They want their legs looking bulgier. <laughs> I don't understand it, but I mean, that's the silliness of the world we live in. I know of a lady in one of our churches in BC that died from a tummy tuck. She went upstairs after dinner, she wasn't feeling well. It's, it's the things that this culture says are important that aren't really real, right? And then some of the things that we, we take in and we watch TV, you know, it's not wholesome thinking. They're not getting us to think about reality. Peter says, I want you to think about Jesus and what he did and what he's going to do and to stir up your thinking to be like his, not to let the world drag you down to its level of immaturity. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, renew your mind, refresh your thinking. Um, this iPad, I got to shut it off every few days and reboot it so the memory is refreshed, so it works properly. Paul's asking you to refresh your memory. Peter's asking you to refresh your memory. Renew your mind with the truth that this world isn't all there is. You're not stuck in something that's always going to be this way. Some of you have said, I don't think this pandemic's ever going to end. Yes, it will. That's how the people in 1918 to 1920 felt with the Spanish flu. It's never going to end, never going to be good again. It's just not true. We're not stuck. Jesus has a plan, and he's drawing our minds to heaven. And Peter's saying, be mindful. That's another way in, when he's saying, I want to stir your thinking up. I want to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to fill your mind with the truth. Be mindful of the truth, the importance that if you catch yourself saying, yeah, yeah, Jesus is coming back. Then you're, you're like the kid on Charlie Brown. Just here's the teacher going, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't let that happen to you. Peter's saying, this is important. And he says, I'm reminding you of it. And we talked about that before. The same way that a coach has to get his team to run plays so they stay good at the game. You got to get the basics down. The basics are this. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, first importance, Jesus died for your sins. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he's coming again. That's the most important thing, the gospel, the good news. Be reminded of it. He's coming back again. The church has been waiting 2,000 years. But guys, in the scope of history, that's a hiccup, right? We're so chronologically snobbish and arrogant that we think the little bit of time that we've got here with the research we've done on the Internet or the Ph.D. we've got, that we know better than, than the Bible that's 2,000 years old. That's stayed the same. That's got its truth fulfilled up to this point. We are arrogant if we think we know better than, than an ancient document that's always proven itself to be true. We, we think that we're so great. We don't even know what happened. We, haven't, we don't even know what the temperature was 150 years ago on this day. We've only been keeping temperatures for 100 years here, right? We got to remember that there, there's coming a day, and it could be any time. The theme of the return of Christ next to faith is the most talked about thing in the Bible. 1,840 times the Bible mentions the day of the Lord of the return of Christ, or the end of the world, and the beginning of the new world. 845 times. One verse at every 30 verses is reminding us that Jesus is coming back. One out of five, one-fifth of the Bible, rather. For every one verse about the first coming of Christ, there's eight verses for the second coming of Christ. 21 times Jesus referred to it to get us to think about it. 50 times we're told to get ready for it. I will come again. 50 times. Peter understood, and he says here, the prophets in the Old Testament 
And some of the letters that Paul and I are writing you from the apostles are truth from Jesus. You guys need to remember this. This is stuff you need to hear. Peter was making sure the church was ready because, like I said, he was going to die soon, and he wanted her priorities straight. Verse 2 says, look at what the prophets and the apostles are saying. Live for the king who's coming. Prepare your life for that. Skip Heitzig, a good preacher, said this. When we start believing the reality of the other side, we'll start living differently on this side. I want to be a grandpa who can walk all of Disneyland with his grandkids. So I got a treadmill. Because I was just living the sedentary lifestyle. I'd sit and talk to people all day. I'd be tired, I'd go home, I'd just sit and watch TV or do something and go to bed. I had to start walking if I'm gonna be able to walk, right? The reality of being a grandpa that can walk all of Disneyland, and I've done it with some crazy youth pastors. We walked 21 clicks in one day, I was dead. So I've gotta get ready for that, right? Well, the reality of the other side of this life is that there's more life. And the kingdom of God's going to last forever. You're going to live forever. So that if you're going to live forever, live in light of the fact you're never going to die if you have Jesus. You're never going to die. That should change the way you live now. In the last days, Peter says in verse 3 and 4, the scoffers will come. Well, the scoffers are here. Ever since Jesus went back up to heaven to get it ready, he said he would we prepare heaven, and one day he come again to receive us to himself. The scoffers have come. They've got their PhDs. They teach at colleges. They tell kids their faith is bunk. They don't believe that theology is a real science. They believe biology is a real science, study of life. They don't believe the study of God is a real science. It is. These people who don't take seriously the things they should take seriously, and they discount it because they can't see it. Oxygen's real, you can't see it. Most importantly, Peter says, when the scoffers come, remember they're following their desires. That's their Bible. They mock the truth because they can't stand the truth. You see, it's a heavy thing for us people to recognize we're accountable to God. So we don't want to hear it. We're like the ostrich with his head in the sand, the little kid who's covering their ears and their eyes are closed. You ever see a little kid? You can't, I can't see you, you're not real, right? Mocking the truth and following their own desires is the scoffer's Bible. They live only for themselves for the moment. They don't think about the future. Where is your Jesus? Come on, he's never gonna come. How do you know you're 48 years old? You're nothing. There's not gonna be any accountability for my actions. I can live the way I want. Yeah, you can. But this is no fairy tale, and justice is a real thing. And you will pay for your crimes if you don't get them right. Justice is built into you. C.S. Lewis said, if somebody cuts in line in front of you, you get the sense of justice real quick. You know, you don't mind cutting in line in front of them. But when they cut in line in front of you, you know what justice is. You feel it in your bones. We see it when we want a criminal to be tried and convicted for his crime of murder. It's justice. It's built into the universe because God is a just God. Yeah, you can live the way you want right now, but you will pay. That's why God, Jesus calls everybody to repentance now. Scoffers will come, walk according to their own lusts. Change that word desire to lust. They don't just have an intellectual problem with God. They have a moral problem with God. They don't like being told what to do. Just like you guys. Some of you don't like to be told what to do at all. I'm the same way. I'm a rebel by nature. But you got to cave and give in to the truth if you want to be saved. The truth is, I'm a sinner. Bob Evans needs forgiveness. Jesus will forgive me and he will restore me. He'll erase my past and give me a glorious future in heaven. Like that song I sang, he'll give me the robe of righteousness and I will no longer be a sinner in his eyes, but I'll be his child. But men push away the lordship of Jesus. Romans 1 says we humans suppress the truth. We tamp it down. We don't want it to come up. When they say, where is he? I'm saying he's very patient with you. That's where he is. He's waiting for you to repent and turn around. Verse 5 says that they, the scoffers deliberately forget 
that God made the heavens long ago. One little guy in my church in Cornell told his teacher, you may have come from a monkey, I didn't. And uh, it was because um, they were being taught evolution. And he wanted to make, make it clear that he, he was created by God. And it says, by the word of God's command, the earth was made. And he brought the earth up out of the water. Remember creation story? The earth was formless. Some kind of weird, dark, misty, flooded earth. We don't know exactly, but out of the flood, God brought the land. And the Bible says that he tells the ocean, you go only so far and leave the land alone so it can be land, right? But verse 5 says the deliberate forgetfulness also in verse 6 means that at one point he told the ocean, okay, now you can cover the land again. Because man had gotten so evil that God wiped out most of mankind with a flood except for one family he saved who lived for him. And he reminds them that judgment came once in a flood. And you know what? We know it's real because the fossil record tells us the flood was real. That's why there's a massive dinosaur fish, almost the length of the hub, embedded into a river rock in Fort St. John. And I'm watching Discovery Channel, and the narrator says, we don't know how that fish got inland 600 kilometers from the ocean, but it's there. And I'm going, hey, I know, I know. Um, the fossil record tells us there was a global cataclysm. So we think because we haven't been part of a global cataclysm that it's never going to happen. We never thought we'd be part of a pandemic. Here you go. The fossil record shows us that there was a worldwide flood. There are craters on this planet the size of lakes. Look at the moon. Look at the craters from meteors. Meteors have hit this, this planet. God just protects us and he holds it back. But the fact is judgment came in the past, verse 6 and 7 tell us. And past judgment guarantees future judgment. Peter reminds us he used water to destroy the world once with a mighty flood. But we willfully forget that. Despite the fact every culture on the planet's got a flood tale in their history. Even the indigenous people of Canada. We've got a massive flood in our past because it happened. And it was not a pretty little picture with smiling animals going two by two into an ark. It was a scary thing when the flood came. And the people that were saved in the ark were probably clinging to the beams of the ark for life while that ark was thrown like a little piece of wood on the massive seas. And they could hear the cries of the people clinging to the mountaintops that ignored Noah's invitation to come into the ark. The ark was 40% full when you look at the dimensions of it. Noah invited people to be saved in it, and they wouldn't get on it. In fact, they just scoffed. Why are you building a boat, in, a yacht in Cornell, B.C.? That's the essential, you know, it makes sense to build a houseboat in the shoe swap area, right? But they were mocking Noah for building a big boat in the middle of Iraq where he was living. So far from the ocean. And they mocked him. They didn't believe the day of judgment was coming. And while Noah was building that ark, the Bible says that he told them, it's coming, get on the ark. The ark is Jesus. And this pandemic has woken people up to the fact that something's going wrong with this world and I'm not okay, I need help. And that's a good thing when you recognize it and you come to Jesus, he's the ark. And don't doubt it for the timing, okay? Verse 8 says, God's timing is not our timing. So they mock and they say, he's not coming. He hasn't come for 2,000 years. Well, you must not forget, my friends, a day is like a 1,000 years to the Lord and a 1,000 years is like a day. God moves according to his schedule, even for the perceived delay that we think he's delaying. There's a good reason for it. And that good reason is people. God loves people. He's waiting so that people can get saved. Remember, this isn't a formula. Peter isn't saying that with God a thousand years is a day. So don't go and say, okay, so let's say the earth is 7,000 years old. Let's go, oh, that means there's only like half a week left or something. Don't try and come up with a formula. But remember, God's patient 
and all things are equally near and present to his view. With God, there's no past, present, or future. He's made this thing called time, and we're in it, and he can see it all. And he is, he is just, I am. Peter didn't give us a formula, but a principle. How God sees time is different than us. God is not slow in keeping his promise. He keeps his promise right on time. Any perceived delay is due to his patience because God's got a plan to save people. The Lord isn't being slow about his promise. Verse 9 says, as some people think, he's being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed, but everyone to repent. His reason for not coming back is patience and mercy. I got saved because God waited and made Paul wait. Paul thought he was going to go be with Jesus while he was alive. He thought the day of the Lord was around the corner. Peter thought the same. Martin Luther thought Jesus was coming back in his day, and he had to die too. Tim LaHaye, the author of the Left Behind series, was sure Jesus was going to be back in like a year, and then he died. But you know why Tim LaHaye had to wait? And the, by the way, he gets to see God before me, so he, he got the better in the stick. It's so that you and me could be saved in our day and age. So it's not just about you and me. Some of us want Jesus to come back so that we can end all this garbage and all the hard times. Well, of course we want that. But what if he's waiting because your neighbor needs to hear that Jesus loves them? Your aunt, your uncle, your best friend at work. He waited till 2021 so you'd all be sitting here today safe in his loving arms. There's a compassionate purpose to God's timing. He wants all men everywhere to come to repentance. Peter reveals the glorious heart of God to save people. Remember John 3.16, never forget it. God loved the world so much. Don't forget that. He came down here. Jesus came down here to die for the sins of the world because he wanted people to be saved. God wants us to repent. Verse 10 says, The day of the Lord will come as a surprise to those who have denied him. I got a friend. His name is Ron. He's a pastor. One morning, his family and him got in the car. They drove to church. They did church. They got home. Nothing was in the house. Somebody had been watching the house and was like, Oh, the pastor goes to church every Sunday morning. And they got home. They were cleaned out. Having another pastor friend of mine, he went to a New Year's party, got home, the house had been emptied out. Nobody expects a thief to show up. Well, Jesus said at the end of time, he's going to send his angels to gather up his, his beloved to snatch them up. That's the rapture. And they're going to be safe in the arms of the army of God while Jesus recreates this earth and fixes it. And it's going to come as a surprise to those who aren't expecting it. Just like my friends weren't expecting their houses to be cleaned out by a thief. But it won't surprise you and me if you're looking for him. If you're expecting him. So are you looking for him? Or is your mind so entrenched in this here and now, you're not thinking about that that's going to happen? Let me tell you guys. Every time a crisis erupts in Israel... That is a sign from God that you should be thinking about the fact that one day that's going to erupt so big that it's going to spark the return of Christ. So you be thinking about that when you watch the news. Bible in one hand, newspaper in the other hand. Good morning. Okay. I'm just saying that there's going to be a crisis and it's going to help you think about... Have a good day, pal. The truth is, is that um, God's trying to get our attention, folks. And it's not going to be a surprise. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. The very elements themselves will disappear in fire. The earth and everything in it will be found to deserve judgment. So there's some things on this earth that are going to be judged by the fire of God. And I want you to get a picture in your mind about the fire of God. Okay? Paul tells us that some things will burn up and some things won't. Okay? When you got gold and you put it into fire and there's, there's dirt and other different kinds of ores locked into that, 
the gold doesn't get burned up. It gets purified, right? And the fire of God is going to purify the earth. Another way to picture it is this way. If I have my way, I think my favorite car would be a steel blue 1968 Mustang. Let's say I went out and I got that Mustang and I, it's parked underneath the tent so it doesn't get dust on it during the day so when I drive home, it's gleaming, right? There's my Mustang. And then there's a guy in the church who's a um, good woodworker and there's a little old lady in the neighborhood that needs some love and she's lonely so he makes her a beautiful rocking chair. When Jesus comes back, the fire of God comes like a wall moving across those two items. And it passes over the wooden chair, and the wooden chair isn't burned up. It passes over my Mustang, and my Mustang's gone. Because the beautiful thing that was made for the love of a person and for Jesus, that remains. That's the gold. That rocking chair where the Mustang was just, you know, a nice plaything for Bob. And that's the, what the fire of God's going to do. is going to purify the world of all the things that don't matter. All the things that we think are just gold down here are trinkets, right? I mean, think about it. In heaven, the pavement is gold, right? And so um, what matters to God? What matters to God more than anything, guys, is people. And... I want to ask, are you ready for the kingdom to come? And are you getting this place ready for the kingdom to come? And are you telling the people that he loves? Seek the kingdom of God, Jesus said, above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. What are the priorities of the kingdom of heaven? It's people. What did Jesus do all day for three years to the point of exhaustion every day? It was people work. And he said, store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust can't destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. And where was Jesus' treasure on this earth? With the people he hung out with and the people he fed, the people he took care of, the people he told he loved them and he showed them that when he died on the cross for their sins. So what are your treasures in getting ready for the kingdom. Let's pray. I pray that uh, God our joy will be Jesus and the people that he loves. I pray that we won't forget what's important. I pray that Lord, the suffering of this world would cease. The young man is right, Lord, is that everybody matters to you. The people in Gaza matter to you. The people in Egypt matter to you. The people in Russia and China. The people in Brazil. The people in Canada. We all matter to you, Lord. And we pray, Lord, the suffering would cease. And that, Jesus, you would come as king and relieve that suffering. We know that you, we just can't wait for your rule to be here on earth as it is in heaven. And we ask that you would come. But Lord, give us wisdom while we're on this side to know how to use our life to prepare. Help us not to forget what matters to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. I'm going to try and lead a song that uh, one of my favorite singers, Rich Mullins, sang. And it's a song that brings me joy. I love it when it's in my head. <laughs> I can find the pick that I put somewhere. My wife got me some cool wooden guitar pictures. Uh, this one says, I picked a good husband. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to try and sing it. If you, if you pick up on it, you pick up on it. In my father's house, there are many, many rooms. In my father's house, there are many, many rooms. And I'm going up there now to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may also be. If 
I go prepare a place for you, I will come back again. If I go prepare a place for you, I will come back again. You know that I'm the way, the truth, the life that's always been. That where I am, there you may also be. That where I am, there you may also be. Up where the truth, the truth will set you free. In the world you will have trouble. But I'll give you my peace that where I am, there you also be. Remember, you did not choose me, no, I have chosen you. Remember, you did not choose me, no, I have chosen you. The world will show you hatred, the spirits show you truth that where I am, there you also be. That where I am, there you may also be up where the truth truth will set you free in the world you will have trouble but i'll give you my peace that where i am there you may also be i've come down from the father time for me to go back up i've come down from the father time for me to go back up one command i'll leave you boys love as i have loved that where i am there you may also be that where i am there you may also be up where the truth the truth will set you free in the world you will have trouble but i'll give you my peace that where i am there you may also be try it that where i am there you may also be up where the truth the truth will set you free in the world you will have trouble but I'll leave you my peace that where I am there you may also be that where I am there you may also be up where the truth the truth will set you free in the world you will have trouble but I'll leave you my peace that where I am there you may also be Bumblebee likes me. He likes the music. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to shut the computer off and then we're just going to talk for a minute about a couple church housekeeping items. Okay. All right. Hey, there's seven people. Give them a hand. They were watching church online. There you go. Hey, you guys have a good day. Bye.